Shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. More on Squarespace at the end. The latest James Gunn film, The Suicide Squad, has dropped in theaters. So today we're gonna look at and rank all five James Gunn films from the worst to the best. Hi, my name is Sean, and I love to talk about movies way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your ranking of all five James Gunn films. My list isn't the right list, it's just my list, and I would love to see yours. And if you want to include some of the movies that he wrote but didn't direct, feel free to do so. Now, James Gunn has had a very interesting career because he started working for Troma as a writer, and if you're not familiar with Troma, they make these very weird, offbeat, low-budget, hard R films, and he went from working on those Troma films to writing two Scooby-Doo movies, and then he went from Scooby-Doo to writing Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead, and then for the last 15 years, he's been writing and directing his own films. That's what we'll be looking at today, so let's get started. In last place is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. In the five years that I've been running, Sean Chandler talks about, without question, the most unpopular opinion that I have shared is my criticisms of Guardians of the Galaxy. Galaxy Volume 2. Now, to be very clear, I don't hate this movie. There is quite a bit to enjoy about it. James Gunn is a very funny guy. There's a lot of jokes in this movie that I think do land, make me laugh out loud. Some of the character arcs and moments work really well, in particular, the treatment of Yondu. He was a fun character in the first film, and then they made him an, uh, an emotional character here and really fleshed him out a good deal. And those are the elements that I think kind of worked the best here. But in general, this is a film that when I first saw it, I was incredibly disappointed by it. And every time I've rewatched it, I've liked it a little bit less. And at the core, I think there's two big issues with this film. The first one, is that I think it's just too tonally inconsistent. It both wants to be a MCU film that's lighthearted, has some Looney Tunes humor, is kind of quirky and goofy, and then it also has a mean streak inside of it where you have people being tortured and thrown into space, a child is being tortured by grown-ups, there's sequences where people are being slaughtered while fun, happy music is playing, it deals with a plot line where Ego has killed off thousands of his own children Children, and this is almost kind of shrugged off a little bit. Star-Lord learns that Ego has killed his own mother, and then immediately it cuts to a David Hasselhoff joke, and that tonal inconsistency is a big part of where this movie just doesn't hit quite right for me. Even like Drax, who I loved in the first movie, his humor in this film is as a strong male character saying a bunch of mean comments about the appearance of a naive, childish victim. I am hideous? You are horrifying to look at, yes. And there's just something in that, it, in an MCU film, it doesn't feel right, it comes, puts a bad taste in my mouth to have it in this context. James Gunn has made movies that are far more mean-spirited than Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, but it's that mix of the mean spirit with the classic MCU-isms that doesn't quite fit right to me. The other problem is, on a story level, it just doesn't come together for me. The inciting incident is that Rocket is self-destructive and selfish and steals batteries for no particular reason. That might set up a character arc for him that has some interesting elements to it, especially when Yondu plays into it. But as a plot in general, it's not compelling at all because I can't remotely sympathize with him and his struggle here because he's just being an idiot. It's not an interesting plot for a movie. It's an interesting subplot in a movie, but it's the inciting incident for the film. The other big problem is the big threat for the film is ego, and he's not revealed as the villain until we're actually in the third act of the film. So it just feels like we're meandering and the first act's villain is the Sovereign, second act's villain is Taserface, third act we discover, oh, oh Ego's the villain all along and it just means the story doesn't have a lot of forward momentum to it it just feels like it's wandering all around as i said before i don't hate this movie i just don't think it comes together the way james gunn hoped it would it doesn't for me i know it does for a lot of you if you love this movie i don't want to take that away from you for me 
it doesn't really work. Number four, Super. James Gunn's first superhero movie might be the most pure James Gunn experience we've ever gotten. It is unbelievably dark, it is witty and funny, and it is jam-packed with James Gunn's friends. Now, when James Gunn was fired over inappropriate tweets, the first thing that came to my mind was, did they watch the movie Super before they hired him? Don't deal drugs! <laughs> Don't molest kids. The entire movie is unbelievably offensive jokes. And that's was his resume that got him the job working for Disney in the first place. Now, this movie is not going to be for everyone because it tries to push every boundary. And the inherent nature of humor is that you're trying to be transgressive. You're trying to get to the edge of too far. And this movie just dangles at that edge constantly uh, and constantly toying with, is this in poor taste or is it just offensive enough to be really funny? A lot of people are going to think the entire movie is just in poor taste. One thing that kind of adds to this film is the awesome cast. In the lead is Rain Wilson. Shut up, crime. Who... Of course you know he can play these offbeat characters that interact with people in an odd way. He can be really funny doing that, and here you get to see him as this deranged superhero running around beating people over the head with a wrench, sometimes for real offenses and sometimes for not really offenses that deserve that kind of thing. But then it's also just fun to see like Liv Tyler and Kevin Bacon in a movie like this that there, James Gunn was able to recruit him for their, his dark, sick superhero film and just kind of elevates the material when you see those type of actors in the mix. Now, it is a bit intense for me. It's not a movie that I can watch on a regular basis, but once every five years or so, when I'm in the mood for something really dark and sick, this one certainly delivers on that note. And it also has a really good score, and it mo times can be very heartfelt. One of those things that James Gunn's able to do really well is tell these bizarre, wacky, wild stories with dark humor and unusual characters, but then still find the humanity in the mix, and he's able to do that here. In third place is Slither. James Gunn's first film is a tribute to 80s horror films all 80s horror films. There are so many plot and sight references to the genre of that time period. It's pretty astounding. Of all of James Gunn's films, this is probably the least overtly humorous. Now, it's offbeat. It has his dark sense of humor in it, but it's not so much as overt of punchline, setup type jokes. It's not a bunch of witty zingers that he's kind of known for in his other films. It's much more of just kind of being this quirky vibe in a bunch of over the top scenarios, playing into some of the tropes of the genre while giving him them his own James Gunn twist at the same time. When it comes to the plot of the movie, it keeps reinventing itself as it goes along. It starts off with maybe a bit of like an invasion of the body snatchers vibe, then it turns into like this hunt movie where you're looking for the creature and then it goes like full zombie mode, body horror, disturbing stuff by the time you get to the third act of the film. And because of this, every time you're like, okay, this is feeling a bit familiar, it just turns the whole thing on its head, changes the tone and the vibe, and ratchets up the tension, so by the time you get to the end of it, like, you don't feel like there's anywhere safe to go. Adding to all of this, there's a bunch of, like, really, just really creepy, unsettling designs of the monsters and the creatures in it. Picture it deals with, like, worms getting in people, that sort of thing <laughs> just, just gets under my skin, and in the movie, that happens quite literally, and so just gross type designs for how everything looks, kind of evoking ew vibes that you want from a horror film. It might not be as 
fine, polished, it might not have the slickness of his bigger films, but for a first outing as a director, clearly he established that he had talent and a love for the horror genre. Real quick, before I give you my top two, remember to join me down below in the comment section, share your ranking of the James Gunn films. Also, if you don't know, I've done a bunch of these director rankings, M. Night Shyamalan, Tarantino, Nolan, Fincher. You can check them out. I'll have a list somewhere showing the other ones, but they're all in a playlist that you can check out right up here when this video is over. Our runner up, The Suicide Squad. So a few years back, James Gunn was supposed to make Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. He'd already written the script for it. And then some old tweets that he'd made over 10 years before were surfaced. They were very offensive. He got fired by Disney for like six months, and during that six months, WB snatched him up, told him, we will let you make a Suicide Squad movie and do whatever you want with it, and in doing so, we get the full James Gunn with the budget of a gigantic studio, and it is a wild, gory, fun time, but also manages to have a nice heart to it. A big part of what made this movie interesting to me is that He's found a way to incorporate the comic book genre with 70s war films. Very clearly the movie is trying to feel like the Dirty Dozen with DC characters, and that's just a fun mix that does something fresh and new with the genre. The other big thing that's great about this movie is that it's made for adults. When he's working for Disney, he has to make movies designed to appeal to a very broad audience, and so it just kind of takes off some of the edge, some of the distinctiveness, and that's where I think Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 just feels off to me, that it's trying to both be a Disney product and a James Gunn product, and the two I don't know always fully mesh together, at least they didn't in that film. Here, they just went go full James Gunn, and that's what he's able to do here. You get a bunch of characters who are deeply broken, some of them very vile people, but he finds the humanity in them. He gives every single one of them some distinct part to play in this tale, whether a character arc, a comedic moment, a trope for what happens in a Suicide Squad movie. Everybody stands out in some unique way, and all of it has big personality to it. In a lot of ways, this is a perfect example of everything that James Gunn is good at. He's great at taking ensembles of very weird second tier characters and making them exciting, interesting characters in finding their humanity. But he's also great with very dark humor while still having a heart and having big spectacle. It has all of it, it delivers. It's not gonna be for everyone. It's too vulgar, it's too off-putting. That's what happens when you make a movie that's a little bit more niche. Some people are gonna love what he's delivering and some people are just aren't going to get it. For me, I had a blast with it. But coming in in first place is Guardians of the Galaxy. Between the Suicide Squad and Guardians of the Galaxy, it kind of just came down to which group of weirdos that he brought together did I resonate with a little bit more, and that's the Guardians of the Galaxy. I just have such fond memories of the first time I went off on an adventure through the galaxy with these characters, and I just immediately fell in love with every single one of them, whether the character arcs, Drax's sense of humor, or just the banter of the ensemble. I mean, I just have such distinct memories of watching this film for the first time and Drax sees Star-Lord go like this and he goes, why would I put my finger on my neck? And it just immediately went, wait, is that what this guy's gonna be like the entire movie? And I just loved every single win one of his dry, literal interpretations inside the film. But it's also a movie that manages to make you care so much about these characters that as you move into the third act, it can take a line as goofy and sappy as We are Groot. And turn it into a real, true, heartfelt moment. Adding to that, you get one of the best soundtracks of any movie in the 21st century. It just finds all the right 
classic rock songs to throw into it to capture the emotion of these characters, of this team, and the world that he's trying to craft and create. And the part where it just has that extra magic is that while this is so fresh, unique, and different, it also fits perfectly in the MCU. It fleshes out this cosmic piece while keeping the humanity, keeping the MCUisms, and also being distinctly James Gunn. So for me, this movie just meant so much to me. I enjoy it every single time I watch it. I just immediately fell in love with these characters. So it comes in. And number one. Now it's time to give a big shout out to today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform from which to create your own website. And I know this to be true because I personally have been a Squarespace customer for over four years now. You can create a community on your Squarespace website with a fully integrated commenting system. Also, you can display your social profile on your website and automatically push your website content to your favorite social media channels so your followers can share it too. The reason I chose Squarespace when I was putting up my website for my speaking business is they have a ton of features. It's incredibly easy to set up and incorporate into your website and they have clean and professional looking designs. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to get started, go to squarespace.com slash Sean Chandler to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. If you're ready to get started, the links are down below in the description and keep talking movies too much.